Imagine a magnificent life where you can master anything you want to, where time is not a barrier. Struggles and challenges you face can be overcome. You can create ultimate control and access higher potential that brings joy and fulfillment in your life. To achieve this, we must first empty our mind to be open for new possibilities before we can launch into infinite heights. In the words of Zen master Shinryo Suzuki, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are few. Join me, the maestro Vincent Chang, as we uncover the secrets to going from zero to infinity. Welcome back to another episode of Zero to Infinity. Today, I'm going to talk to you about time and this concept, this notion of time that we are living in, that we use, that we invest in. There, there are so many dimensions to it. And in fact, I'm, I'm going to write an entire book around it. And today I'll, I'll talk to you about how I've used my time and, you know, doing a lot of this moving from career to career, even as a young age, being able to utilize my time in such a way that's so much more different than other people. And I think already uh, as a child, you know, when you're able to finish your homework in 10 minutes and they're taking two hours, you know, they might be asking, your friends might be asking, you know, how, how, did, how did you do that? And you know, oftentimes back then, I, I don't know how I did it. I just, it, it just comes to me. It's easy. And, you know, same with playing the piano. You know, people take an hour to practice a passage and get it right. Whereas here, me and my brothers, we would just put the new piece in and just play it like without practicing and just straight through, you know, where, how, how are some people more inclined to, you know, use that time or, or get to an end goal with time so much quicker than others. And this is a, this is the sort of problem or everyone wants to solve. In fact, that's what's has been created. All of these new inventions and innovations and, and new devices, you know, it's all about how can it be easier for you? How can we improve and how can we save or make our time more efficient so that we can use it to make new things or enjoy other things? And when we have to, of course, when we talk about time, we're going to talk about money because that's our standard way of, you know, being living in this world that you know, you go to school, you spend time to learn and, you know, you go to university and with that time is then spent to acquire knowledge and practical application. Then you go out there and get a job so that when you trade your time back to contribute to a company or uh, an idea or, 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 or service, then you receive an exchange of money so that that money can then be used to feed yourself or clothe yourself and, and, and put, have shelter. But I wonder if we can challenge that traditional notion and belief of time that we all subscribe to, like who teaches us that, you know, does everybody have to work a nine to five job in order to use that time and then make an hourly rate and then live. And for most, that is the belief that is the world that has been handed down or taught to them based on the culture or based on society, based on their family, based on their economic background. Now I came from that background. Like you go to school, you get a job and then pay your bills and retire. And then if you have money left over, then you can invest it or then you can enjoy with it. Now in the most recent two years where I've started to feel, wait, there's, if this keeps happening for the next 30 years, now I stop working and I'm retired, what happens? And now I'm seeing 
the previous generation that they've worked all these years, 30, 40, 50 years, and now they're sitting on and, and they're using their pension and using retirement, and it's barely enough to sustain their current living conditions. It's not even basic. They can barely pay their rent. And I'm like, there's something, there's something off here. Like, isn't the point that we invest our time and then we get to a point where we can truly be free? Is that what we want to use our time for? Or is that what we want to use our money for? this state of freedom and enjoyment. And then you can start to give back to society and, and integrate in all sorts of ways. But we can't do that if we're constantly trying to survive in you know, our current modern sense. Uh, so I'm questioning that and I'm been, beginning to see that. Well, now, of course, we're in this time of the most the largest inflation, like the highest inflation rates we've ever experienced since the 80s. And we don't think about this. You know, when I first started work, it's like, okay, get, put your money in an RRSP and, and, and start to buy this and the retirement fund and pension. And then they say, okay, if you invest when you're 20, by the time you're 60, let's say you invest, you know, $100 every month, that's, you know, 1200 a year. By the time you're 60, with the compound interest, you might get up to a million dollars. Okay, great. When I was 20, a million dollars could buy four houses. A million dollars now, and I'm only just past 40, so 20 years later, a million dollars can barely buy a decent house that you could buy four of. So what happens when I'm 60 and I have a million dollars? It, it makes absolute no sense. So I want you to understand what inflation really is and what time is so that you can see into the future that let's maybe take a step back before we subscribe to these beliefs of how we invest in the banks and in, in, in all these retirement funds and that a million dollars might seem a lot right now, but 20 years later, 40 years later, it's absolutely, it's nothing. You know, when I was a kid, everyone wants, oh my gosh, let's get a million dollar home. And, and it's like the biggest mansion you could see and a million dollar home. Everyone has a million dollar home. It's barely enough to, you know, you can't even afford it. And so be, a, being able to foresee that future, and, and I think that's what I have been able to, uh, uh, an advantage over many others as a kid, that I could see way farther into the future, and I could see that, wait, if this keeps happening, that, that won't make sense. It doesn't work. So for me, I'm, I'm a problem solver. I always want to find a solution to something. And whereas everyone else says, this is impossible, I would say, well, no, I'm going to try and do it. You tell me you, you tell me I can't do something and I'm going to show you how I could do it 10 different ways. And I think that belief system, that determination and that drive is a skill we can all tap into. The moment you say you can, you believe you can do something and that you're going to do it. Now you're going to open your mind to find different ways to actually do it. And, you know, as Robert Kiyosaki says, you know, a statement closes the mind. I can't, I don't know, I'm not going to be able to, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money. Well, that statement is a belief. You've said it, the period says, now this is true, and it is true. I don't have time. Great. I don't have money. Okay. I'm, I can't do it. And so it is how we can switch into a question. So he says, the question opens the mind. How can I do this? What can I do? Who can I ask? When do I want this? The moment you start to do that, now you've created a foundation, a landscape of possibility. Hmm. Wait, I can't buy a million dollar house right now. 
then I won't even try. I won't, you know. But how can I get a million dollar home? Hmm. Well, I only have a thousand dollars in the bank, so what, what, what can I do? So this is moving into a state where we don't know if we have the time, we don't know how, we don't know this. And, and when we start to ask, every time we ask a question, we're seeking an answer. Now, this is one of the most basic blocks in, I think, most of our society, most humans, that when was the last time you really asked someone for help? You know, and I'm in this profession of you know, being a therapist, a coach, a mentor, that why, if I don't, if I ask, that means my mind is saying, I don't know something. And we have this, our egos are the biggest blocks. It's telling, well, if I don't know, then remember all those times at school or at home, you don't know the answer. There's something wrong with you. Why don't you know the answer? You should know the answer. You know, what's, why didn't you study? You didn't do something right. You should have done more. And we're put into a lack state, what I call the lack state. And it's going to be in my book and, and heal the source. And that's what I teach. Knowing that you're in a lack state means that you're somehow less than. So your emotional, psychological sense of self is... I'm, I'm scared. I'm less than I'm in, in a state of shame and a state of guilt. And, and, and so that is painful to bear. Like think about how often you will admit to somebody, Hey, I've, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be humiliated. Well, I kid you not like all those times as a kid growing up, going to school at work, even now, that's one of the biggest fears. You know, we're, we're, we're conditioned in a lack world. If you, we're, we're all, our motivation is so that we don't f feel that humiliation or we don't feel that shame or the guilt or the uh, less than. So if we're always trying to avoid that don't want, now we're perpetually in fear of it. So when we're afraid of it, we're, we're, like if you're afraid of a spider, you're not going to be go near the spider, but then you'll always be afraid of the spider. So how you want to move from this lack state into a want state. Now that's what I call the want and have you switch, you know, all, everybody up there. If you're, if you're studying, if you're reading if the, the, the feeds, it's just go from a don't want to a want. It's as simple as that, but it's not as simple when you start to apply it. Because our subconscious, our whole society, look at all the ads and commercials. They're always like, don't be a loser. You know, if you do this, you're cool. If you know, the, it's all based on lack. And when there's lack, there's fear. So if we start to move from a fear state to a loving space, a growth space, now we're in much more calm and supportive. We, we are trusting in ourselves versus I don't know. I can't do it. And, and then we give up. So most people don't ask because they fear that acknowledgement of shame when they don't know. So here, once you're able to understand that and take care of this part of you that is, you know, humiliated or scared or, and, and that's truly that's heal the source. And you say this little boy is afraid to ask for help and is feeling shame. Well, why? Because he's gotten it. He's gotten it from parents. He's gotten it from school. He's gotten it from teachers. He's gotten it from friends and peers. And he's even gotten it from TV. You know, you're, you're not like this. You're not as strong. You don't have these muscles. And like, you, you have to understand there's so much of this. And that's why I've been limiting myself. I'm very conscious of what I feed myself with in terms of media and information and even emotional energy from other people and their beliefs, because it truly affects how I begin to see myself. So now let's want, let's 
begin to give this little boy or little girl a new experience. You know, if a, a little child came in and was scared and shamed, what would you do? You wouldn't say, suck it up, you know, be, be better. Why are you so afraid? You shouldn't be afraid. Well, that response and that reaction actually doubles the layer of shame and guilt for this child. And now he's even more scared and now he's even more rejected and avoidant. And then he would be like, well, if no one's going to support me, especially the people I'm closest with, well, that means how can I trust anyone in the world will? And so I then move into a avoidant state. I will not ask. I will, you know, be in this loneliness and this terror and this fear and this numbness. So we're going to change that. We're going to say, how can I help you? I get that you're afraid. I get that you're feeling humiliated. And then we begin to shift the belief of asking for help into when you ask, you can receive. How can you get the answer? You know, just because one person rejects you and when that rejection feels like it's not acceptance or love and they're rejecting you versus they rejecting the question, you're going to separate your sense of self from the content. You are not the thing that you failed. You are not the thing that you don't know. You are a human being wanting to grow and learn and, and, and enjoy. So this is the, what I would say, the, the core teaching here, the moment I'm able, and I call this the zero state, the moment I'm able to surrender into a zero state and be completely humble. Now I'm asking, I'm asking infinitely. I'm asking everyone and that asking, and now I'm getting answers and I'm getting knowledge and I'm going to apply it. And in such a short time, especially during COVID, that's what I did. I decided I'm not going to subscribe to a belief 30 years down the line and be miserable and broke and still can't afford things like, wait, how are these people doing it? And, and that's how, what I call like, you're seeking a mentor, seeking a coach, seeking someone who can guide you and this guidance, you know, what I call this, you know, you're, you're practically assimilating their time that they've spent. So let's say they had 40 years to go from nothing to now they're thriving in this empire that they built and they're helping millions of people. Well, imagine you spend 10 minutes with this person and ask a question. Imagine what answers and what knowledge, what experience, what wisdom you would receive. And that is how I've been able to, you know, exponentially grow like in, in, in seconds, you know, I had my first mentor and so I have many mentors, the more, the better. Like I, I'm just hungry for knowledge. And one of the best mentors you can actually get is in a book. I don't have any books. I have books everywhere. There's a whole bookshelf right there, but you know, you, you get a book and this book, the author has gathered all that experience, all that wisdom and condensed it into 200 pages, a hundred pages, 300 pages. And I, it's as if every time I read a book, it's this, this mentor is teaching me. And oftentimes I mean, you ask yourself, when, when was the last time you read a book? And yes, of course there are books for enjoyment and entertainment and, and and then fantasy, and, and it's great. It's like watching a uh, Netflix show uh, that's drama or sci-fi. But then there are Netflix shows that are documentaries. They're, they teach you something, like explained, like, you know, why, and, you know, they take you through. So you can learn, you can also enjoy, and, and I'm talking about the mentoring of the book. And I've been an avid reader all my life especially as a little kid love reading and maybe because I was so maybe different from other kids uh, I sought solace in in reading and, and yeah just because 
that was where I felt, ah, I have a beautiful space. It's, it's nice. It's, I can immerse myself in, and even that is different. So I go to the library and all these other kids are, are taking out two books, three books. Yeah, no, my mom came with me and we have a laundry basket. <laughs> bring the laundry basket i'm just tossing books in there and it's like completely full we go to the thing and they say oh we usually have a, a limit uh, is really he, he can read all of that and my mom's like you don't know this kid <laughs> and so of course the librarians and the people checking out always in disbelief and go home boom constant because of course already at the time even school was like a joke to me like <laughs> why why are we, people are learning multiplication and learning this and i've i've already like i read the whole the whole textbook already so like what else can i do with my time it's boring and uh, of course we couldn't play video games during the weekdays if we had this contract but uh so I had more well, reading books. Well, it was productive. It was enjoyable. And finished that and put it all back. And then we go back to the library and toss all these books. And the librarian's like, what? You read all? I'm like, yeah, this one did this. And that one did this. And that one did this. And I was, I'm like six years old, seven years old. Like, you know, six and seven. You don't read books. You're playing with sand. You're... you're <laughs> You have this little figurine. Yes, I did all of that too, but that you know, knowledge and I just you know, especially those choose your own adventures. I used to love those, and you know, sometimes you would just have one ending, and oh no, I chose every single ending for every single book, and I read them all, and I put myself through every experience, and to this day, that has been one of the most you know, like like the, the most I would say effective or, or the most valuable, invaluable skill that I have or anyone can have. So, you know, asking the question, well, now that we, we don't even have to have books, we have a whole, whole infinite system of information in the internet, right? Like, I don't know something, well, ask Google. It's so much more, it's so much more easy now than, than you know, 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Uh, but I'm, for me, this, this experience of touching a page and, and entering into that, something happens to the mind. It's, it's very different than watching a video. Um, and some people, you know, it depends on what you like, it depends on what your preference is. Some people like the audio, that's if you're listening to this, right? Versus me writing a book and you're reading the book and touching the page or watching this video of me presenting whatever I'm, you know, all this information that I've experienced. Uh, so we all have these senses and, you know, one might be more than others, but hey, you can say, I'm stronger with a visual, I'm stronger with a audio or whatever works for you. We're all different. And once you find it, use it. You integrate it. It doesn't have to be one or the other. But I feel we're, again, this lack state. We're often judged, you know. Oh, you can't read enough books. You, you're not a good reader. Oh, you got a D in reading comprehension. And now the, the teacher has instilled a belief in you that you're a poor reader. And if you go and, and search up Jim Quick, like that was his belief. Doctor says, hey, you're never going to process information the same way. You're never going to read. And now he is the leading expert on neuro, you know, plasticity and, and teaching people how to gain memory and read faster and learn quicker. Like, why are we so susceptible to what anybody else says? And here I'm offering a chance for you to formulate your own beliefs, you know, really read, you know, find a mentor. And look, my, my, call my pre one of my previous lives as, cause I was, I wasn't happy, you know, and, and as an engineer and during those like 
when I was starting work in the company, I didn't read a single book. I think for years, I did not read a single book. And once I retired from it, and once I sought more passion, the, the, the books I started to read were about conducting, were about music. And I studied with mentor, you know, my dear Carrie Stratton, he, and I loved, I was reading again. It's like, how do I apply this technique? How do I, how did this conductor do that? And, and there is no quicker way to assimilate and, and make use of your time than with a mentor. So one hour with Carrie equals 30 years of me doing the same thing, reading all these books and practicing. And that is, that is the mentoring system. That is the coaching system. And those of you, you know, maybe you're listening, but if you go on my website, look at some of the testimonials, people who have worked with me in this way, achieved something that they thought were impossible in such a short time. So I have this you know, 90 day program that gets you from zero to infinity to the state of feeling like you can do anything you're a whole different person and i know that because i've done that for myself and from a state where i believed i wasn't enough i couldn't do this i'm always going to be like this and my you could call my financial mentor my jerry robert like he was the one he's done this for 40 years, 50 years, and he had a mentor and his mentor was Bob Proctor. And Bob Proctor had a mentor as well, Earl Nightingale. And, and Earl, I think with Dale Carnegie, he was the one that, or Dale, not Dale Carnegie, Andrew Carnegie, I get them mixed up sometimes, but he was a billionaire that taught Napoleon Hill and Napoleon Hill said, I don't know what to do. And okay, spent 25 years to gather all the success philosophy and, and interview all of these people and make a book out of it. And now this book is the most, it, it has made more self-made millionaires in the history of the world than anything else. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And when I first started this new, you know, it was during COVID because I, I lost my complete music profession. I was beginning to be afraid. I was broke and I'm like, wait, I, I don't want to be broke anymore. How can I be wealthy? How can I be free? Why am I dependent on so much? Why am I always worried and fearful? Oh, it's because the beliefs around me, you know, through society, through the culture, through you know, people around me, friends, family, they all subscribe to, oh, don't, don't lose your job. You can get something stable versus I had no one. And now I'm studying all of them. And that book tells you exactly why people either fail or succeed. And now I'm feeding myself with everyone who is successful, everyone who is trusting, everyone who is helping and growing the world and changing it. And one session I remember, and I think we're coming up to the anniversary, you know, of, of two years ago, uh, I took this author boot camp with, with Jerry Robert and July 17th and 717 is my number that I had a, I won a one hour session with him one-on-one. -on -one, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to the, I can't believe how, how lucky I am. And I get to really be with a master you know, that has built a hundred million dollar empire and, you know, helping people become authors and write books and, and he's worked with Bob Proctor and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Well, well I want to be like him. I want to, how did he do that? In one hour, that one hour changed my life. That one hour allowed me to be more successful. And I'm still, you know, through, of course, after that, I, I did go into deeper mentorship with him. And I am in my most successful state in my entire life I've ever been combined. In the last two years, I have done more than the last 40 years because I went with someone who had 40 years of experience. I cut that time and he has a phrase and you've seen, heard that phrase. 
a mentor will shave decades into days, literally. And that's happened for me with my mentors. I have, I have many, you know, a financial one, a business one, I, uh, a spiritual one, a health one. And you know, like, I want to grow. I want to be more. Why not? If I don't ask, I won't grow. So I challenge you or I offer you, I encourage you to go into a zero state and say, what is it? Why don't I ask? Why don't I commit? Why do I believe I can't do it? And same thing with clients and, and people who've worked with me. I shaved their decades into days. And here I am back then engineering. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on parties, on ridiculous, frivolous material things. I have nothing to show for it now. But in the last two years, I took that money and invested it into myself, invested it into a mentor that can help me grow into who I want to become versus spending on it just to avoid feeling a sense of lack or misery or fear. That is, the, that's how it works. You invest in yourself, the knowledge that you gain the knowledge that every book that I have is invested in me. I don't lose it. I'm going to apply it and I grow. So here, here I am saying, are you waiting to invest in yourself? Are you waiting to ask for someone who can really help you become who you are? And if I spent those five years back then doing this, I would. I would be on a completely different world in, in, in my life. Um, but I've done that for others and others have done that for me. And if you really want to make a change, if you really want to, you know, achieve whatever you want to create the life that you want, well, let's ask someone who has done that. And that person that you align with will give you infinite support. And in one month, just working with my mentor, and of course, others have been, you know, in one month, their lives have completely changed. You know, you ask them, you know, I ask them myself, I, I don't recognize myself, you know, two years ago, or even six months ago, or even three months ago. I, it's this constant growth, and, and I'm hungry for it. And I want to create more and help others live that way. Like, why, why do we have to suffer? You know, maybe most people won't admit that they're suffering, but there is a lack state. There is a fear state. So let's use, you know, that sense. If we truly acknowledge we're suffering, we're in pain, which I avoided, of course, and from years and years, and I, you know, doused it and numbed it with, you know, substances and, you know, it's just things that don't matter, like really. And... Yeah, what good is, you know, 10,000 DVDs when I'm miserable, right? And what good is a wall of lightsabers when uh, I have no, I've lost the thrill of life, right? So finding that passion, and all of you have this passion. You, all of you have a gift, and you know, it doesn't have to be, oh, I don't have what he has. I don't have what she has. I'm not a good artist. I don't have the skill to do music like that. I don't... That is all complete lack. You're comparing yourself with lack. And of course, you remain in that. Why not say, what do I have? What am I good at? What do I love to do? And then take charge and say, who can help me develop this? You know, it can be anything. You know, I'm working with someone too. It's like, went from just making beads and necklaces. Like, oh, of course, this is something nobody's going to buy that. It's not what the little trinkets and that. made made a lot of money. And it was for a good cause funding for, you know, what we need in this world. People want to buy it and support it. And it's like you have a gift. It's time for you to step out there and offer it. It's like, you know, this pen and this is like there's this laser you know, pen that you know that's that that can 
you know, be a touchpad and, and, and different colors. And, and it's like the most amazing thing that was ever invented. But if you don't know about it, no one's going to, you're not going to use it. So this is where we get into more of this you know, marketing and, and branding. And a lot of us don't want to put ourselves out there. I didn't not, not in a chance, but my mentor says, you know, you do it. I don't care if you're afraid. I was afraid too. And I've done things I was terrified of. And of course I you know, fall flat on my face sometimes. And I go back, Hey, you know, that's think about when you were a kid and you were on the bike, you fell. What did your parents say? You're horrible. Get off the bike and don't do it again. Probably I've gotten that right. It's we're, we're not taught a system in which it is actually in growth. It's all in lack. It's all in fear. It's all in shame. And most of our society and so the whole world is governed. It's controlled by fear. If you fall out of line, I'll punish you versus if you do this, this will be happening. I will, I will gladly support you and collaborate. And it, so let's begin to change this paradigm of, you know, feeling like nothing ever is going to work out for you. And, and you don't have this and it, no, let's ask, let's go into possibility mode. Let's go and that's, and that's where the zero to infinity is, is in the don't know state. I can go to zero in the don't know state. That means I'm, I'm nothing. I'm weak. But if we're truly able to accept that and Socrates, this was my, this is my mantra, the best wisdom ever, because once you understand this, now you can do anything. He would go around town and it's, and it's also in the matrix. When you walk, when Neil walks into the, the Oracle kitchen, uh, above him is a plaque and here he is the first time it's like, ah, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing here. It's who are you? And, and the Oracle is like, you, you know, you know why you're here. And he's like, yeah, but you're not, it's like, but and he's like, I'm not sure. I don't think I am the one or I, I don't know what these people are talking about. And then she's like, you see that over there, right above you. You know what that means? It means it's temet noshe. It's Latin for know thyself. It's like, it seems like you're unsure. It's like, yeah, I don't know myself. It's like when you do know through and through, you know, but that's not the real teaching here. Socrates went around, you know, telling everyone, know thyself, know thyself. And he's teaching his students, know yourself, know thyself. And then a student comes up to him and says, but master, do you know yourself? And he smiles and he's like, I don't know, but I understand that don't know. That blew my mind. Maybe it'll take you some time, but feel free to reach out. Like I always love to have feedback, you know, put it in the comments and, and even email me. Like this is all about learning and, and, and growing and, and enjoying the process. He says he understands that don't know. When you understand that you don't know, now there is infinite possibility, infinite knowledge, infinite ways to know more. We're, we're in this society caught in this world that we're comparing ourselves to what we do know. Hey, this is my belief. You don't know anything, especially around this COVID thing. Well, I know this, you know, and the vaccine is this. And if you don't do it, holistic, this, and I know this, and, and there's a war. And of course the war is literally happening and there are wars happening everywhere based on this lack and belief. And that's why I created heal the source. Like I, this is not about you know, building an empire or anything like that. No, this is a vision of the world that I see in which we are able to understand our own conflicts, know thyself so that we're not trying to get the other to solve it for us. That's what conflict is. If you truly know yourself, but how do you do that? You have to go to a state in which you don't know. You have to go to that zero state. Every day I say, I don't know who I am. 
well, what am I going to do about it? Do I sit there in a corner and, you know, be, be humiliated and shamed? Yeah, I did that for a while. And that's usually the, the, the human response. But what am I going to do about it? I don't know myself. Well, if you go, go into my library, hundreds of books. You know, maybe I can ask you, ask yourself. You know, on those five years I was an engineer, just partying, I read zero books. In the last two years, in the last three years, how many books have you read? I have a bookshelf, I think I must have read 150, 200 books. At one point I was so hungry for the knowledge and I felt like I was going too slow. I got a book to help me read faster, a speed reading book. And then I was like literally a book a day, you know? And retaining 70% of that knowledge. And here I am, like all this knowledge that I'm sharing with you, I have just absorbed. And so here in this, well, almost 45 minutes, I am, you're assimilating my time. You're assimilating all of my 40 whatever years of, of knowledge and wisdom and experience and, and feeling uh, in this short amount of time that I've just condensed. And now you've gained knowledge or now you're experiencing something new. And then you're like, what? That makes sense. Or man, I don't know about that. Or wow, if I did this, this is life changing. I can do that. So think about how you want to use your time. And you know, if you're listening, thank you. Thank yourself for investing this time into acquiring knowledge, into experiencing something different and that's the vision of this world I, 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 I'm committed to. I want to have a world in which when we stop our outer conflicts, when we're able to know ourselves and, and now we go into a don't know state. What don't I know about my brain? What don't I know about the universe? Versus I know one plus one equals two and if it's not, you're wrong. That is completely ineffective. It just shuts down all creativity, all possibility. Versus how can one plus one equal three? Let's figure that out. I, well, I don't know. Doesn't mean it's not possible. I haven't explored the possibilities enough. That can go for anything in your life. And here I'm using this little math example, but it could be, well, I, I want to be, you know, a, someone who just helps people with their plants and grow. Well, you can't make a living. No, how can you do it? Do you want to? Here I am wanting to build a world in which we can resolve our inner conflicts so that most of our conflicts are resolved. And now we can spend our time doing something that is much bigger than our fear and our egos. And sci-fi, a lot of these things like Star Trek and they already showed us you know, someone had a vision. If our whole economy changes and we're not dependent on this money, we're now focused on the betterment of human society and life, human potential. We would have been on Mars 10 years ago if, if all of this was eradicated and we wouldn't have poverty. We wouldn't have, you know, like, we wouldn't even need a prison. You know, that's, that's this whole notion that we're always based on, you know, punishment or fear and we're not breaking the rule versus how can we grow? What don't I know? Let's get into a discussion where we talk about what we don't know versus what we do know. And you know full well, the moment you know something and someone knows something and it's not in agreement, we have a conflict. And that's everything around this, uh, the beliefs, we have beliefs. So here is a belief of mine. And maybe you, you think, Hey, this belief is wrong. I don't believe that it's not about right or wrong. Let's move away from this. It's about sharing something that I know and you sharing something that, you know, and then let's move into a space where, what don't we know? And now we have a common ground and now we're collaborating versus competing. 
So, so here we have it, how we can use our time, you know, find a mentor, ask those questions, you know, be hungry, because then it will lead you to answer the biggest question of all. Who are you and what do you want to do with your life? Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I wish you an awesome, awesome dirt day and journey. And till next time, zero to infinity. You can always visit me at healthesource.com or email me at vincent at healthesource. Hey, maybe you're looking for a mentor. Maybe you want to work with me. Like I've, if you feel it, draw, contact me and we'll talk and say, what don't you know? And maybe I know. And then we'll figure out something we don't know together. And now you're in a completely different space. All right. Thanks again. Till next time. You've begun this incredible journey to infinite mastery. To reach infinity, you must first get to zero. Be open to learn so that you can become a master in whatever you desire. Infinity is possible when you master and leverage time to your advantage. Subscribe to the Zero to Infinity podcast with maestro Vincent Chang to gain ultimate control and realize higher potential. Visit my website at vincentchang.ca and healthesource.com to learn more about creating success and balance in your life so you can master anything.